General Bishambar Dayal, starting with you out here, what is the intent and how should we deal with it? See, Arnab, the intent is very clear. Uh, the intent of Pakistan is to see that uh, democracy does not flourish in, in, in Jammu and Kashmir. That they send a message across the world that these elections and everything going on in Jammu and Kashmir towards development and opening up of Jammu and Kashmir is on our case. Uzmaji, I'll have to. Uh, Uzmaji, with respect, I'll respond to you. Uzmaji, Uzmaji, I'll respond to you now. Uzmaji, Uzmaji, I'll respond to you now. I'll, I'll respond to you now. Please hear me now in entirety. Uzmaji, listen to me in entirety. Listen to me in entirety. It's not going to do you any good. If innocent people get killed, nobody, nobody uh, is, uh, you know, uh, saying that that's a good thing. Our people, look at it. In Karachi, we had this suicidal uh, uh, blast and uh, our Chinese friends and some Pakistani, uh, uh, you know, citizens, they got killed. So we are facing terrorism ourselves. Now, you, if you have some uh, terrorist, uh, uh, you know, incident in India, well, investigate and see who's doing it. You people, you know, uh, at the drop of a hat, you start blaming Pakistan. You have no idea uh, how to handle these situations. Have an investigation. Uh, now you now that you've finished, I'll get Sushant into it. the debate. And what with a brief intervention from my side, Uzmaji, now listen. Now listen to me, Uzmaji. Listen to me. See, listen to me. I ask you this question with all seriousness, with all seriousness. And I don't know, Uzmaji, when you were born. You may have been born in the 1930s or 40s or 50s, I presume. But you can ask anybody who was born in the 1970s or later that your history books say, according to your history books, because you're a brainwashed person. You see, you've brainwashed your people. You are, you are, you, according to your history books, you say that you won 1971 war. Do you realize that? According to your history books, you say you won the 1971 war. You said Osama was never in Pakistan. You are such absolute liars. You refuse to take your bodies back during Kargil. Your former Federal Minister of Interior refused to accept Kasab. You refused to accept that Kasab was a Pakistani. You refused to accept pa Kasab was a Pakistani. You, you, know, you guys, you know, you. Uh, no, don't you keep saying you guys, you guys. When I'm giving you facts, there are no you guys situation out here. The fact is, the fact is, we have a choice now, Sushant. And I think our only choice is a military choice. Our only choice is a military choice, Sushant. So I have a couple of things. Uh, one, I think we need to debunk this nonsense which uh, Ms. Kardar is talking about Take freedom in India. Take freedom. Take We've seen uh, an example of the freedom in Pakistan. They have a government which had lost the election which has been planted in office because of uh, the army. Uh, we've seen how they passed a constitutional amendment. We've seen that you have they have an army which is so interested and so... Uh, uh, so invested in uh, conquering the Supreme Court of Pakistan that they have given away large swaths of territory in KP and Balochistan where uh, militant groups and terrorist groups have uh, set up uh, their own check posts. They are losing, they're, they're, they're losing control over large swaths of territory, but they're more interested in occupying the Supreme Court. Which, good for them. I, I don't have a problem with them. Uh, but she, when she talks about freedom, I, you know, it's laughable when she talks about freedom because you have MPs who have been kidnapped and who are forced, who are intimidated, their wives, their children, uh, their houses are raided so that you force them to vote in a particular way. This is freedom as far as this lady is concerned, but she's in power right now, so she can say whatever she, hell she wants to say. That is one. Secondly, uh, look, the problem is that... Uh, with the Pakistanis, you know, they think if they think that, you know, carrying out this kind of a dastardly attack in Jammu and Kashmir is going to stop the progress in Jammu and Kashmir, they have another thought coming. Uh, you look at uh, if, if anybody has been to Muzaffarabad and has been to Srinagar and I've had the opportunity of going to both places. Muzaffarabad is a dump, as is Mirpur, right? Uh, and if you look at Srinagar, it's... It's better than any city in, uh, in, in, in Pakistan. It is far more vibrant. It's far more lively. And 
because terrorism has largely been crushed in uh, in in Kashmir you have a, you have a situation where you now have cricket matches taking place you have marathons taking place all kinds of things happening tourism is happening so obviously the pakistanis cannot countenance it so clearly they are trying to disturb the peace out there now the question then arises what are we going to do about it uh, look there are a couple of problems out here on our end one is that you know we've had this thing that okay fine some of these terrorists will carry out these operations we'll finally get to the bottom of it and they'll be eliminated and and they'll be ruthlessly eliminated and we've been doing that over the last couple of months there has been a spike uh, mostly in jammu but one or two incidents in the valley as, as well uh, I, and i'm very confident given the kind of security presence in the valley the kind of intelligence grid and security grid we have uh, these guys are going to be caught and they'll be sent to meet that 72 hours or whatever they they are hankering for so that's going to happen but i think arna uh, look the problem however is going to be that if we are talking about a military response then we need to think through how, how that military response is going to play itself out 